Winged Nation presents, presented by Driving DRF Racing Oils. He's a bigger-than-life personality. He's a member of the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame, inducted in 2017. He's a seven-time Knoxville Raceway champion with 59 career wins. Yes, it's T-Mac, Terry McCarl. Now, during the World Finals here in Charlotte, we had a show called Wing Nation tri Legends. It was at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. We had NASCAR Hall of Famers, Ray Evernham and Tony Stewart, sit down with sprint car legends and dirt track Hall of Famers like Terry McCarl. Now, Aaron Evernham and myself, we were part of the conversation as well as it took place that morning at the Hall of Fame. With thousands of laps logged, Dryden's DRF Racing Oils were built and proven on the track. And now they're ready for your race engine. DRF is engineered exclusively for high horsepower racing engines that require maximum performance against the toughest competition. And DRF Racing and Break-In Oils are built with competition grade ZDDP to protect critical engine components while boasting improved torque and horsepower and superior temperature reduction. To get DRF in your engine, go to drfracing.com or call 1-877-DRY-D. And now batting down the hatches, here we go with Terry McCarl. One of the absolute biggest, biggest characters in the sprint car world. He also is a member of the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and a multi-time champion. So many wins at the Knoxville Raceway. Let's bring Terry McCarl up to the stage. Terry McCarl's in the house. And uh, now... There's not going to be much problem drawing words out of Terry. No, again. no. <laughs> and I know Tony's been talking a lot about fighting, so this there's going to be some good conversation. Oh, boy, here, here we go. She, see how she starts? She this just could started. be my brother from another mother Exactly. Right here. That's what I was getting at. So if, I, if we had to get in a, in a fight tonight at the dirt track, this is the guy that I would want beside me in that fight. <laughs> so, you know, that's as long it. as he's got enough gel in his hair to not mess his hair up, because he's got nice hair. he got nice that's hair. That's how they make me mad if they, they mess my hair up. That's I'm right. Really mad. That's right. There we go. Terry McCarl's in the house. In me already. See, it started before we even get you. Get now. Okay, he's he's mic'd up and he's ready now. He goes on equal terms. Well, right? I'm going to let Tony pick this up because if he's going to start talking about whipping asses and everything, I don't want any part of this. I'm Trust in the me. middle of them too. Trust me. I, we where were we at? We were somewhere in Missouri at a 360 show, mm -hmm. and and I don't even remember. I can't remember Grain, what. Grain Valley, Missouri. I'll, I'll start this one, okay? <laughs> At Grain Valley, Missouri. Got up here. We got a good Grain number. Valley, Missouri. This is a pretty good story. And there. Frank Beers and I are standing in the, on the backstretch pits over there. It's just not too far from Kansas Speedway. And these two, for 15th spot in a regional 360 race. That may have paid $1,500 to win. To win. So. <laughs> and, <laughs> you guys, and you guys weren't close to the leaders at that no, point. No, we, we weren't even. My story, we, we were We might have been. But. We might have made enough to get our pit pass money <laughs> I don't, back. I don't know about Barely. That. These two, you'd have thought they were duking it out for the Indianapolis 500. Dude, as far as I was concerned, I was. I was racing against Terry McCarl, and I thought, and there was, a, there was a small percentage that I might actually be able to pass him once and make it stick, but I was quickly and rapidly running out of talent fast First and realizing all, that I couldn't hold my like breath my that wife long. says, there's three sides to every story. There's going to be your side, my side, and probably the truth. But uh, I'm curious about your side. No, I, <laughs> I, I finally ran out of talent. I don't remember. I, I know we ran into each other. Well, I'm, I think I ran into you enough that finally there was a red. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm just happy that I get a chance to catch my breath. I'm like, finally, you know, sorry. Next thing I know, Terry has got me by the face of the helmet with his hand. and. Almost, he was this close to succeeding and pulling me all the way up through the belt system and out of the car <laughs> through the belts. I thought, That's the year you won the, you won the cup championship too. So well, well it's because I learned how to fight that year. <laughs> so, <laughs> wasn't scared anymore. But but I mean, and that was the thing. It, to me, it was like, man, I, I hadn't had it. I think I'd only got a chance maybe two or three times before that night to ever race with you, and, and I was never even close. And it was like that was the one night that I finally was close to him. I'm like, man. This might be my night. I actually get get to outrun Terry McCarl. That didn't work out how I had a plan, but 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 I learned a I learned a big lesson there that when the when the car or when the red's out, don't take your helmet off under the red. Still, it's, this is not how it went down. It's not how it, that's his side of the story. <laughs> now I say the truth. 
We were. It was, it was a fun racetrack. That's the only time I ever raced there. Super, it was. super it was, slick. It was neat. And we had a restart, I think, and then you, we come off the corner, and I, I, I ran India, accidentally, of course, inadvertently, and I got into him a little bit, and then we were racing around. I got by him, and sure enough, we had a, a yellow a little bit later, and we take off, and he gets the opportunity to repay me a little bit here, go down the back straightaway, gets in the back of me. I spin out, and he's dead up against me right in the cockpit and just full blast. Like he ain't get, <laughs> whoa, he is not gonna give up. And it got to the point where he I mean, he, he had to stop because he couldn't, he, I don't know how he didn't flip, but he was just T-boned me exactly perfect. And this, I'm like, oh crap, that's Tony Stewart. God dang it. And so I was, I, again, my side of the story, I was pretty calm and cool. I'm like, oh, it's Tony Stewart. This is, and then, this is quickly turning in an, into an episode of The Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> but then I hear him going, you stupid son of a I was like, what? I threw off the belts, and I had I may have inadvertently grabbed his helmet a little bit. Dude, I did, I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't know my neck could stretch that far. It was pretty <laughs> impressive. I felt bad later because my son Carson was pretty young then. He's right there on that back straight where there's the pit grandstands. He's like, Jesus, Dad, you were screaming and hollering at him right there. And Tony Stewart, he's leading the cup championship. And you're grabbing by his helmet. I'm like, some shouldn't have yelled at me. It did, kind of, it did make my neck feel a lot better for a couple weeks because I needed it cracked, and it cracked a lot in that one moment. <laughs> Wow, I'll tell you, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad I never got involved in anything like that in my race. Well, wait Road. till he starts, comes back and runs 305s. You'll get a dose yeah. of it. All right. Or 410s, both. All right, same well, thing. By, yeah, the, you know, thing. I was going to yeah. say, by that time, you would have, would be like, they'll have the wheelists up. Uh, <laughs> not sure that, that Crocker's going to let me run any more sprint car stuff. But, yeah. Aaron's came down and yelled at me before, though. So yeah. Whoa, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. You joined the crowd. Again, my side of the story. Yeah, my we, side we of the can story. go there. I, I remember being upside down at East Bay Raceway, laying on my side in a heat race. We're fighting for like third or fourth I in a heat race. This one. I do. Oh, see. Because we again, you, we were right in front of this whole crowd, and I'm laying on my side, and you're calling me every name in the book, and I was like, oh, I'm so pissed. But you did pull over and apologize okay? later. That... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it was a few different words than that. There was, I was you know, worried was about Tony. I was trying to help him out of the car. I thought yes. he was injured. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and there was another the time way. at Houston's you were. You the probably Houston's remember that. Right, yeah. Remember. Yeah. yeah. Did you not know that she was a redhead? Because of oh, yeah. I, I learned, right. do not, do not right. yell at her. You're not going to win. <laughs> I don't know I what you're talking about. I like redheads, so I knew it. I got to um, to do some racing with her and with Brooke Tatnell, and we ran one of your events. and. I was really honestly impressed of the way that that whole event was run, it was promoted. And what I wanted to ask you is, do you think because you see everything from the driver's side that that makes you a, a better promoter? You know what the fans want, you know what the drivers need, and it just, that, sm that show always runs really smooth out there. I think, yeah, that's, I've just, I grew up, my dad was a race car driver and he was like, not like you, he built his own cars, he built his own engines, he was an amazing welder, all that stuff, but I grew up around it and, and so when I was a little boy, you know, we didn't have the internet, unfortunately, I'm dating myself a little bit, but Speed Sport was, man, I, it was there on Thursdays and when my mailman was late, if it came Fridays, I was mad. And I read that thing cover to cover about the sprint cars and I'd go back and you know, read all about AJ Foyd, he was my hero, and I'd read, I'd read all, but, then it, but the next time it came, I knew everything. Back then. They used to put out racing, they'd have the, the, pur the purses and stuff in all the, and then the ads. And I remember as a little boy redoing purses, trying to make it pay better for the guys. And so I've seen about every angle of it. I mean, I've been the son of a guy who raced, and then he was a car owner and a mechanic. And, and then, uh, you know, I've just grown up around it, and I've seen all the aspects, I think. And I just, I'm passionate about sprint cars, and I'm always trying to better the sport. And between my wife and I, we think of, try to think of new ways to do things. I mean, we've been copied by so much stuff. It kind of irritates me at first when people copy our ideas, but then I think it's, you know, it's for the better of the sport. People are out there trying to promote. You know, it got, a, got to a point where I felt like people were just putting on races. They weren't promoting, you know. Uh, our philosophy was, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you come to a race, whether it's NASCAR or World of Outlaws, and the racing isn't that good. I wanted the people to leave our events and go, you know, racing wasn't that great, but we had a really good time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we worked real hard. I think last year, between Sage Fruit and all the people that to support us, we threw out like 2,000 hats and shirts. And, you know, we go to these monster truck things and they'll shoot out about five. During the night, everybody gets all excited. I mean, last year, I think we counted, we were up around 2,000 goodies for the fans between the two days. You know, and if you leave there with a free hat or a shirt or, you know, Budweiser gives me a lot of stuff, I'm getting out Dale Jr. signs and things like that. The fans love it and, you know, kind of paid for your ticket. So, you know, I try to give out great things for the owners and drivers. And uh, this is our 25th anniversary this year. And so we're going to pump it up again. I gave out chassis kits one year to, to heat race winners. 
you know, it was worth 5,000 bucks to win a heat race. So uh, Raymer, Raymer was there one time and I was giving out rear ends and he crashed on the start of the heat race. And he'd come to me later, he's like, damn you in that rear end. He goes, I just wanted to win that rear end so bad. I ended up junking my car. I, I fan seen a good show. <laughs> so I, just, I enjoy promoting, that's a passion for me. It gets me excited and uh, I, mean, I love driving, I love, but uh, for, to me, uh, just getting sprint car racing out to the people, letting them see it and, uh, and trying to make everybody happy, which is difficult to do, is, is kind of our goal. I think it's something that, you know, I've, I learned when I went to one of his events for the first time at Oskaloosa, something he did that nobody at the time had ever done was all the vendors that wanted to come sell parts at the racetrack and they wanted to make money, he wouldn't let them in unless they donated something to give to the heat race winners, for example. And that's something nobody does. I mean, it's, and, and it's because he cares about the racers and, and, you know, hearing what you're doing on the grandstand side. I mean, I didn't even know that side of it, but I knew that was something that always stuck in my mind the first time I went there to your event and was like, man, the heat races, I mean, it's more than just your starting <laughs> spot. I mean, you're going to get something out of it. You're going to get a rear end. You're going to get a fuel cell. You're going to get something out of it that's going to help your race team. And this is a guy that goes toe to toe with these vendors that, that want to come and, and, you know, sell parts at the racetrack. And he's like, well, you can do that, but you got to give me something to give back to these racers. And that's, that's something nobody else does that I don't think you get enough credit for. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we've been copied a lot and I enjoy it, but uh, again, it's my passion when I quit racing, that's kind of what I want to do. But unfortunately, if you guys know, Tony broke his leg and it ended up being at our race. And I was like, because I wanted to win that rear end, Dan. I know you did. You were going to win the race. I was all like, he just took the I lead. I almost lost my rear end down. Of the yeah, you so. did. I was standing in turn one. He just took the lead. I swear, in my mind, I was like, yes, he's going to win my race. His name's going to be on our shirts. This is going to be great. About a lap and a half later, yet red flag comes out. And I'm like, I just had a feeling that it was clear over in turn three, so I didn't see it. I'm like, oh, no, this can't be. And so we got a call. Lori got a call that week from ESPN. And they're like, yeah, we want to get credentials for your race and stuff. And she's like, oh, okay. Uh, are, you guys, are you guys wanting to come because Tony Stewart's racing? They go, oh, no, we're coming to interview Kyle Larson and check Kyle Larson out. <laughs> so, like, it was on ESPN in minutes after he, you got in your wreck. I'm like, oh, I was just devastated that he got hurt. But uh, he's obviously came back. We, we, sh we show each other our leg scars once in a while. His is, I think his is worse than mine. We're going to be leg models one day. Well, because sure. of, of both you guys, now, again, this is something that impresses me that, that both of you have been in racing a long time. You're not only trying to improve the promotions and racetracks and series, but you've both worked pretty hard on the safety of these cars. Yeah, it's when you when you when you get hurt, it makes you think yeah. about it a little more because well, you don't that, want it to happen again. Yeah, I don't want it to happen to anybody. And I have two sons that race now, so I especially don't want it to happen to them. But yeah, I mean, I, as a promoter, you don't want to see anyone. That's my, I just pray every night that no one gets hurt, that the ambulance doesn't leave. That's my main goal. And then if we make money, honestly, you know, then that's, that's secondary, really. And I think that's something, too, that we appreciated and didn't even realize at the time how much we appreciated till that night happened. But the safety crew that, that he hires and, and has at the racetrack, if that safety crew was not there and it had been 98% of the other racetracks that we both that have ran track across we, the country. Yeah, we were at that one night. Yeah. If it would happen anywhere else, I mean, literally, I would have bled out and died that night. But because of the safety crew that, I mean, Terry has to pay these guys to come do this, but that's what he thinks of the competitors to, to have a group like that come uh, from Houston's to come down and, and do that event. I mean, those guys, uh, I mean, I, I owe my life to those guys. And thank God it's because he had the foresight to, to realize that, you know, this is a sport where you need more racetracks, if they could pay attention to, to that aspect of it, would make a huge, huge difference. But that's that's how well-rounded Terry is as a promoter and thinking about the fans, the competitors, the owners, uh, and really taking care of every aspect of it to where when we go there, we, we feel comfortable about everything that's going on. You know, and, and I think that's, it's important that you're, you know, you set that example and guys like you have the notoriety to talk about it. And you, and you mentioned you're, you're your sons, you have, you have two boys that are, that are driving and, and when you are watching a family, a loved one drive a race car, it's a lot different than watching just somebody that you've, you've hired to drive your, to drive your race car. Uh, you know, I, I found that, you know, when, when I might have had a front axle in the car that was a little bit lighter than it should have been and Aaron flipped at Knoxville. I did not like that. Had that been Jeff Gordon, I'd have been like, toughen it up, buddy. But yeah, you know, come on. It's, it's, it's a little bit, it's <laughs> oh, a little yeah. bit different when you have your family in there, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. What did, the, what did your friends say when you started going, hey, I'm dating a sprint car driver, a World of Outlaws sprint car driver? What did your friends My say? My friends were like, whoa, that's cool. You Steve know? Kinzer? Yeah. yeah. No, no, they were, yeah, no, they didn't. They, 
they, you know, all those rumors about me and Jeff Gordon absolutely oh, really? weren't okay. true. Right. No, no. Right. Listen, it's you your know, story. We, we you tell it however yeah. you want. We're Again, not just more than one side to every story. But honestly, they they knew. You know, a lot of my friends knew who she was, and they're like, okay. But having your kids race is definitely a totally different act. You know, when Austin started. I was racing against him a lot, or I was off on the outlaw tour. I didn't see him race a lot, and I got hurt one time, and so I got to watch the races and I go back to the pits, and I was like super nervous. And Lori's like, you know, I just realized you really haven't watched Austin race very much, have you? And I go, no. And she goes, you need to calm down. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how you do it. I mean, you know, because her husband does it, and this is how we pay our bills. But then when you throw the, the kids in there, that's like you said, that's a totally different, totally different thing. So, and you know, mainly, and you know, you want them to win and all those things, but you just, you know, you want them to be safe, just like everybody. But for your kids, and then I got to race against them, and they race me different. You know, like trying to pass them, like I'm way faster than Austin. Trying to pass him one time at Houston, and I'm like, I slide in there. I didn't want to put a hard slider on him. I'm like, son, just hit the brakes. Let me go. And he go back around me. I go. God, I chewed his butt afterwards. I'm like, God dang it, let me get by. I'm coming by you. You know I'm going to beat you anyway, damn it. He's like, oh, crap. <laughs> so they, they love beating me, that's for sure. Well, that's what I wanted to know. What is it like racing against those two? Cause, I hate it. Because Austin's racing the 410, Carson's running the 360 a lot, yeah. and they're both good in it. I mean, it's it's not a walk in the park when you got to race your own kids. No, they they like racing me, I think, because they love beating me, but um, I don't like racing them. I don't. It's, it's not cool. I just, you know. I, I hope they win. I mean, I want them to beat me, so it's probably not fair to my crew. But uh, I really, ha you know, people used to ask me, what are you going to do when your kids start beating you? I said, well, I'm still pretty decent, so if they beat me, that means they're doing pretty good, so I'll be pretty happy for them. But, you know, like you guys were saying, or Dave was saying earlier, that, you know, I just told him, I said, listen, your dad's not rich, so you've got to learn to work on these cars because it's so hard to find a good mechanic these days, and the people that want to do it, it's getting harder and harder, you know, in any employee, in any business anymore. But to get someone who wants to be on the road, the, the, the crew guys really work hard, and it's a tough life they lead. And, and I said, you got to be able to get out. I remember when I first drove for my dad, and I get out of the car, and he'd be like, well, what do you think? What should we do? I go, I don't know. I'm going to put tear-offs on. You fix the thing. I don't know what the hell it's doing. <laughs> so um, you got to learn to get out and communicate with your mechanics, and it, it will help everybody. So like Austin right away, you can build the whole car by himself, fuel the engines. They can do it all. Carson's learning to do it all, running the valves and everything. So I think, like Bobby said, I guess that you know, that will help them in the long run. And, and, and if they want to be sprint car drivers, you're going to find out if, if they want to work on them and, and do all that part. And, and protect themselves against if you get a bad mechanic or some mechanics that really don't know what they're doing as much, you can overcome it and know what's going on in the seat. So, so, so let's get to the most important question. When you do have to race those two, if something hap something were to happen on the racetrack, what's the boss lady down there say when you get in there? Oh, I'm always wrong, no matter what. I mean, no so matter I, what. No matter what. I mean, if they do, a, if I say, you know, Austin should have done this. Well, you, you know, you had the car all screwed up. If you got like, what? I mean, come on, mom, be nice. But we had we had a run in last year at Park Jefferson after the nationals. Me and Austin started in the front row, and it was juice down on the bottom where he's at, and but the cushion was way up there. So I kind of got a good run, and he got the start. And I, here I come. And he didn't know I was there, you know, and come up, boom, hit me. I did everything but flip. Well, Carson's right behind me, my other son. It flips out of the ballpark. So then, uh, yeah, it turned, it turned into rigmarole at first. So it, you know, Carson walked all the way down and yelled at Austin. I'm like, he didn't do it on purpose. So that's about the worst thing we've had happen. But uh, I'm sure there'll be a few more of those before it's over. But it long, those two are best friends. It's, it's awesome. They're, they're wives. Actually, Carson's engaged to Craig Delansky's daughter. They're going to get married next year, so it's kind of a, it's going to be a funny story. That's going to be a fun wedding right there. But uh, <laughs> Shoot, the reception's going to be a trophy dash at some racetrack. Yeah, it, <laughs> it could get weird. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're, they're both best friends, and, and they're both different. Carson's a little more of the salesman type, and Austin's a little more of the mechanic type, so they work really well together. Terry, it's been great. You know, I'd love to hear some more stories about, the, about well, some of those things. And, and again, always enjoyed watching you race when we were at, at Knoxville. But I think more importantly, some of the things that we've talked about today with all of our guests so far have been that tradition and family history, you know, three and four generations of people. Yeah. So, you know, congratulations. I think it's wonderful what your dad did, what you're doing, and what you're doing with the sons, and what, what you're doing for the fans. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. How about it for T-Mac? Terry McCall joining us here at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Yeah. Every time I get interviewed, I have to mention that Erin is the top finishing woman ever at the Front Row Challenge. She beat, drove by Sammy Swindell. Very, what was it, seventh? I forget. Uh, six. Si see, see. Yep, six. Six or seven. Yeah, six or seven. Yeah, wow. Six. That was my second 410 race, too. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm Absolutely. Still impressed yeah. by it. Front Row Challenge. There and you go. And it went all downhill from there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. Terry McCarl joining us here. With thousands of laps logged, Drydeen's DRF racing oils were built and proven on the track. 
And now they're ready for your race engine. DRF is engineered exclusively for high horsepower racing engines that require maximum performance against the toughest competition. And DRF racing and brake-in oils are built with competition grade ZDDP to protect critical engine components while boasting improved torque and horsepower and superior temperature reduction. To get DRF in your engine, go to drfracing.com or call 1-877-DRY-D. Terry McCarl is bigger than life, one of the great talkers and great ambassadors of the sport, and we appreciate him and you joining us here on Wing Nation Presents, presented by Dryden DRF Racing Oils. Winged Nation Presents, presented by Dryden DRF Racing Oils.